William Shatner is here. He's a classically trained actor who has had one of the most varied careers around. He has done everything from Shakespeare's Henry V to the television cult classic Star Trek. Here is a look at some of his work. He did not kill my father. How do you know? I know my brother's heart and soul. How long have you been here, Captain? Two years. Two years? That's a long time. Yes, sir. Any friends? Sure. German friends? Yes. Girl? Yes. Her parents were Nazis, but she was eight years old when they came in. I didn't ask you that. I know, but maybe you were thinking it. It's natural to think about it. I thought if anybody was going to indoctrinate her, it might as well be me. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, don't look at me like that. Bob! I am not imagining it. I'm not imagining it. He's out there. Don't look. He's not there now. He... he jumps away whenever anyone might see him. Except me. We sent a spirit on Brillant to me and me and the jargon. Me and Manoy and Regardo, Eileen. Through a toy, Kais and Roy. There is, of course, no escape. How would it be? Trapped forever with a raging madman at your throat. Until time itself came to a stop. For eternity. How would it be? T.J. Hooker is the name. But you don't have to lose any sleep wondering what the T.J. stands for. As far as you're concerned, my first name is Sergeant. Prepare for what promises to be a day of astounding musical, theatrical, and dancing talent. And after I'm finished, you can see the ladies. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. The worst thing about growing older, Ernie, you begin to slip. One day you wake up and you're less than. And for me, I'm a legend, Ernie. I'm folklore in this town. Lawyers have feared me for years. For Denny Crane to slip, it would diminish my legacy. It would be a tragedy. Jenny Crane has to go out big, page one of the Globe, New York Times even. Do me a favor, Ernie. Pull the trigger. His latest project is a one-man show about his life. It is called Shatner's World. We just live in it. The New York Times says, if it seems moderately insane that an 80-year-old actor who gets plenty of television and film work should suddenly be trying Broadway, you just haven't been paying attention to the Shatnerian career arc. The unexpected is what he does. My God. Having said that, I'm pleased to have William Shatner at this table for the first time. Welcome. Indeed, for the first time. And I want to tell you, as I told you off screen, I watch you all the time. You're masterful. Thank you, sir. And I'm so honored to be here. Ah, we have much to talk about. So this one-man show, why? Uh, Australia called and said, how would I like to do a one-man show? And I thought, well, I'll tell some stories, get some things. There's another guy on stage. I, I don't need anything. No, we want another guy on stage. I open in Sydney, and people leap to their feet. Yeah. I do the tour Australia, yeah. and it's very successful. And I think, well, hey, yeah, I've hey, done a one-man show. Got Canada. Yeah. Start in Vancouver, go the way through the Montreal, the band, they leap to their feet. Toronto is the same as uh, has the same high standards as uh, as New York, and I I, I I get through Toronto, and and that's it. And then suddenly uh, they asked me to come to New York, and that's a whole different ballgame. And so I began to obsess, and I use that word carefully, about what to do, how to do it, can I do it, and can I make a point. That at my age, my life might have some meaning. And since we all ask ourselves in various ways, who am I, what am I, and what am I doing? And that's a rhetorical question because there's no answer. If I present to you some of these facts, can you give me an answer? And so beca became this magnificent, obs I hope, mm. uh, obsession of doing this one-man show in such a manner that it would be effective and, and, and well-received and bring in audience. So how has it changed from Australia to Broadway? First of all, there's one person. There's nobody saying, and then what happened? There's me editing, film editing, a literature, a literate thing. As you might write a novel and go from 
a chapter uh, in a love scene to a war scene, mm -hmm. and the juxtaposition gives you a rhythm, so I attempt in the one-man show to play a scene, and then suddenly I'm somewhere else, and then I'm, and I literally say, I'm sitting in, and I paint the picture. Or I might do it about music, or I might do it about love, or I might do it about a horse, or I might do it about a show. Or... And what might we learn about you we didn't know? I'm not sure uh, what you learn about me. What I do know is that in every time I've done the show, whether it was with in Australia, Canada, or here, people, and especially here, yeah. don't just rise to their feet. They leap up and applaud, and I'm, I'm overwhelmed by this emotion that comes across. I'm, I'm, they don't know it, but I'm reduced to tears that I'm fighting because, in a way, there's validation, there's acceptance, there's the result of all this work. Sort of. Roll tape. Here's a clip. It's the next morning. There's a knock on the door. Who is that? I go to the door, and it's a little boy. Yes? He says, are you Captain Kirk? I said, yeah. He says, is this your spaceship? And I recognize the, the thing standing on the, on, and, and this thing in the moon that he might. Yeah. Can I come in and see your spaceship, Captain Kirk? Come on in. I take him to the stove. <laughs> this is where I guide the spaceship. Oh, Captain Kirk. I show him the shower. This is where I beam in. Oh, Captain Kirk. Wow, Captain. I get out of here. I'm a theater actor. I need my sleep. Okay, Captain Kirk. He leaves. There is a middle-aged man on Long Island at this very moment is saying to anybody who will listen to him, I was in Captain Kirk's spaceship, and nothing you say will tell me otherwise! Did you write this? All of it. What was the hardest part about it? Editing it? Narrowing it down? Say you're a journalist. Mm. I'd say I'd wake up at five in the morning obsessed by this thing. How can I make that story the minimal number of words? Right. How can I paint right. that? What does that kid say? What does the kid sound like? Mm. And, and that's sounding like, which is the acting, the nuance of the, com the comical nuance of the line. Yeah. What are the minimal number of words that will convey the meaning and yet get there and get on to the next story? That's what well, was the difficult. That's what art's about. That's what cutting it down to its purest, to its and purest finest, finest. Form. Exactly. It's what journalism's about. It's about the how to write the best story. Exactly. It's up. It's 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 art. Yeah. yeah. Uh, roll tape. I want to see another part of this. This is talking about uh, Christopher Plummer's uh, understudy in Stratford Shakespeare Festival production of Henry V. Here it is. We open the play. It's a major success. Chris Plummer is brilliant, and the play is on the air, uh, on the stage. And 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 six days goes by, and somebody graduates. Says, You're wanted at the at the uh, at the festival offices. I go to the festival offices, and and uh, Guthrie's there. The guy says, young man, Plummer's ill, can you go on? Excuse me? <laughs> you, uh, you, 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 uh, you want me to go on for Henry V? And uh, I, I've never rehearsed it. I, 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 I've never said the words out loud, uh, except in the toilet. <laughs> I've never worn the, I don't have the, and, 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 and there's going to be 2,500 people with critics in, in, the, in the largest speaking role of the English language, and you want me to go on? Of course. <laughs> there you go. How long does this last? It's uh, an hour, and, it, about hundred and, mm. uh, an hour and a half or 40 minutes, something like that. There's some like, you went 143 minutes tonight, you know, so what? So what, exactly. Yeah. Um, when you look back, tell me what you're proud of, 
in this remarkable career. Fifty years since you were last on Broadway. Yeah. Fifty, count. Yeah, shot in the dark. Yeah. Um, I tell the story about my going on stage at the age of six, so yeah. uh, it's, it's a lot longer than 50 years. Uh, what am I most proud of? I don't think in those terms, Charlie. Right, I'm sure what I think of in terms of, for example, is what you just heard. Somewhere in the last evening or two, because I've, I, I, I've, I've always said I, I go to the toilet, and when I come to declamatory speeches like once more to the breach, dear friends, I flush the toilet so nobody will hear me. But I added, I've never said this out loud except in the toilet that night for the first time and it got a laugh okay yeah. so a little tiny little moment like that that i sewed in yeah. is like a moment of great pride star trek will always be what they say i guess you're okay with that you know i am um i directed a documentary called uh, the captains and uh and a documentary it's like finding a story. You say, well, the, the guy killed the shot the guy. And the, uh, now you go to find out why the guy shot the guy. And suddenly, a story opens up, and that's no longer about a shooting. It's about this guy's personality and what yeah. happened. And, and then this other person and then the wife and the thing. I'm doing this documentary, and I realize that I've sort of disparaged uh, Star Trek for quite a while. Mm. And I didn't realize I was doing it until I got into the research on... on uh, Patrick Stewart. And I thought, my God, I've had this disparaging uh, a attitude, this defensive attitude for years. And I had an epiphany. Like, why? It's a great piece of art. It's, yeah. it, it was wonderful. It changed a lot of people's lives. And, it, and I should be very proud of it. I, why aren't I walking around saying, yes, you're right. You can't go, yes, I am. Yeah. You know, instead of, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's great about that is two people uh, in real conversation sharing the conversation and this acknowledging the, the impact on each other isn't that the best interview to have yeah. with, that the interviewee and the interviewer are realizing something and there's something building between them yeah. i love that kind of stuff you enjoy doing that the documentary, the documentary yeah. i've made three or four now i got an award-winning one made on called gonzo ballet where i examine a ballet being made i've got one on uh, on who goes to uh, uh, uh what fans go to these these uh, uh places that where, where fans go and, and why why do the fans go to these conventions and and who are they and it becomes suddenly it becomes part of the culture it's no longer they're silly little people they're yeah. people participating in a cultural event some people believe that priceline.com has made you a very rich man well uh, uh, I'm a business major which I refer to in the in the show and so uh, I know a little bit about being locked up when you have stock in an original company, you're locked up for a period of time so that you won't take advantage of raising the stock as high as it'll go, selling out uh, to you who buy it, and then you're stuck with it when it falls. So I did indeed negotiate uh, getting stock in Priceline.com uh, when it first started. And it went up from three or four dollars. It was hundreds of dollars. Jay Walker was a genius. Jay Walker was a genius, exactly. Jay Walker said what, he was worth more money in billions of dollars than General Motors was mm -hmm. at one point in time when I talked to him. And he said, I said, I'm going to do a university. I said, you're going to endow? Uh, he said, no, I'm going to build a university mm -hmm. with the money he was going to make. And that's what he's doing. So the stock one was sky high, right. and everybody's waiting. You know, it's a year. You got a year and a half. You're locked up. It's eight months. Wow, it's quite nine months. That's quite wild. A year, jump it down. And the moment you could sell it, it was worth pennies. Nothing. And so it wasn't worth anything. Yeah, but then did, you didn't sell right then, did you? Wait. I uh, sort of did. I don't yeah. quite remember, but I. But, but it was you, it was all over. The dot com bubble. Yeah. Well, it was it burst. It burst, and and only a handful. Only an expert would know. But a handful of these thousands of companies remained. Yeah. And the one that remained had some value and Priceline.com had a value. It gives a service that is really a valuable service. And, and now whether it's talking about dating or buying things, I mean a lot of companies that have done enormously well. But it's a it's the power of the network to link people up, you know, who have similar aspirations. Well because there's uh, so many so you know no, it's a world so, that we live in where we know so much about everybody. So many people are lonely, as you know. My driving force, one that I used to think about a great deal is loneliness 
as an actor, as you go from city to city or job to job, you don't really know anybody. So yeah. if you're on location in a movie, for example, yeah. and, uh, and you're doing it, and you could be well up there in the hierarchy of the movie and you don't know anybody, you sit alone in your room mm. until you're called to the set. Sometimes days may go by before you're back on the set. You're there alone. Loneliness. Loneliness of the life of having to go someplace on location, go someplace to find the job, go someplace. Loneliness is the sickness of the soul. Mm. Is that in this... Shatner's world? Uh, a lot of it is. Uh, I, I talk about death and what happens. What, what do you think happens after that? And what people said uh, as they were dying, what they said, yeah. and why didn't they well, tell us? You know, the books and, about that, what people's famous last words, you know. Well, uh, um, amazingly, I think that this was said at Steve Jobs' memorial service by uh, his sister, I think, that his last words were, wow, wow, oh, wow. Now, I do Steve Jobs. I, I do uh, Timothy Leary, yeah. The Last Breath. Because yeah. exactly what you said is what his sister wrote. Oh, wow, oh, yeah. wow, oh, wow. We're not given any context. Yeah. I act out the context. <laughs> you do? Yes. How do you do that? <laughs> well, what did he say? Oh, wow. <laughs> or, or did he go, oh, wow, yeah, no, oh, no, wow, no, no, no. you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, it, to watch the moment of death is extraordinary. I mean, I did it with my mother. It's really, I mean, you, you, every person goes through this. You don't, you, you're pulled by two different emotions. You want to say, hold on, hold on. And on the other say, you want to say, let go, let go. You know, I, you do not I know faced, what to say because you don't know what's in their head, nor do you even know whether they can hear you. I faced a loved one who was dead. Right. And I looked at, and I said, what have you done? They were smaller. They had shrunk. Yeah. It was like yeah. death was so foreign. Like where where did the animation of this gorgeous, brilliant, uh, the funny, yeah. uh, sexy where did, what happened to that? All of that. It was a shrunken mass that was wet and sodden, and and death is ugly in that in that way. Uh, I talk a little bit about. You've worked with the remarkable people, and just seeing Judgment at Nuremberg reminds me of, of how wonderful Spencer Tracy was. Wasn't he wonderful? I had no idea. I was so callow. I didn't. I thought that was a good scene. I thought I was terrible. You know, I mean, I just all your impressions of uh, of the right. past are right. uh, filtered through more mature uh, eyes. Uh, it's different. Yeah. If you could go back and do one thing over again, what would it be, Charlie? I am so happily married. I'm in the middle of a great success on Broadway, yes. a one-man show and on you're Broadway. you're 80 years old. And I'm 80 young. years old, young. I'm young. And I've got my health. My children love me. My children are happy. I've got animals. I compete on horses. I got, I've got this life that is so vivid that to say I should have done something else no. is not only... Uh, uh, ungrateful. Uh, un, un, uh, well, it's it's uh, it's it's disgraceful yeah. that it might have undone mm -hmm. the skein that has been knit already. You mentioned horses. What is this love affair you have with horses? Well, horses. Horses are are first of all beautiful. There is an art in the beauty of the horse. Then, when you're past the fear and the techniques of how to ride a horse. Mm. There's a communication that, give me your hand. It's, yeah. I can do this and talk yeah. to the horse. And the horse says, no, I want to do that. And you say, no, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Let's do this. I like to do that. And it's as gentle and as knowledgeable as that. Yeah. Are horses different than dogs? Uh, yes, they're bigger. Well, of course. They, but, but I mean, it's the same uh, thing with no, dogs. It's but, the same thing with dogs. Yeah. You have to be, let them know that you're in control yet let them know that there is a, you know, yeah. you, you're listening but, but and hearing. But there is the essence of control. You have to be that with horses. And a pack right, instinct. Right, right. But that control from a human being can be just presence. It doesn't have to be, not, I said sit down. Yeah. It can be sit. Yeah. Oh, I, I go in the park and walk a wonderful dog, a black lab named Barkley. You have? I do. Yeah. Wonderful. And... I saw the other day someone working with his dog, and I, I, I just stood there and watched because he was just very quiet and would move, and the dog would move. There was no 
command. Right. That's there was a, a that's linked into I mean. each other. You know, and you can know that with a horse, you can do the same thing. A horse can feel the gentleness of the move and feel your own body exactly. as you lean this way. But that's way. exactly right, because they don't speak verbally. Yeah. But there's a Feel. vast language. Yeah. Dogs, horses, all animals have a vast nonverbal language. And if you're tuned in, they're talking away. They're saying, Indeed. well, I don't feel so well. Get out of here. Shatner's world. We just live in it uh, on Broadway at the Music Box. 